Hey everyone, Ian King here, and welcome to your weekly Smart Profits Daily video. Uh, thank you for joining us here. If you like what we have to say today, always give us a like button, and that helps us spread our information out to other people on the internet. Joining me this week is my friend and colleague, Steve Fernandez. Steve, what's shaking this week? Not much. Looks like the Fed's uh, going to taper. The market's down today, so we'll see what happens. Market up, down, you know, it's it's been uh, a, a battle of volatility in the last couple of weeks. Huh? So I got something special I want to talk to our viewers about today. And we discussed this before we went on air. We want to talk about the worst trades we've ever made and talk about what we learned from them. And hopefully, you know, you can also share the worst trade you've made in the comment uh, below, because uh, we'd also love to hear from you about it. And Steve, I want you to go first. Tell our re our viewers here, what is the worst trade you've ever made? Yeah, I mean, it's going to be a cop out because I, I had more than one worst trade. Uh, I think a lot of people can attest to that. But the type of trade that it was was the same. So when I first started trading, um, you know, I I like the idea of making money fast. Who doesn't? And my strategy was to buy whatever, you know, one of the top moving stocks on a given day. Um, without really doing much research on the stock. And what ends up happening is usually it's like a pump and dump scheme. And, you know, sometimes it works and it, the stock will move up overnight and you get a chance to sell the next day. But you'd be surprised or maybe you, I know you wouldn't be surprised, but a lot of people would be surprised how often those companies turn around and just sell stock the next day. Mm -hmm. And it just, you know, they'll sell stock 50% lower than where the stock closed. And it, you know, it really only benefits the people that either orchestrated the pump and dump or got in very, very early, which can be hard to do. So, you know, that was something that I did for a little while, but quickly learned that, you know, that's not how you uh, how you trade or invest for that matter. When you learned that you were making this mistake and uh, did you know how many times that you, you did this? Did you, did you keep a record or were you just trying to um, yeah, I mean, I could probably say uh, confidently at least five times that I really got caught in one of these things. And um, yeah, I mean, I'm sure a lot of people can relate, especially when they're first starting out trading. Mm -hmm. um, but like I said, I mean, if you, uh, if you if you lose a fair amount on a trade doing the same thing, hopefully within a few trades, you start to pick up on what went wrong. So about five probably okay and then so your process changed a little bit you did a little more due diligence after uh you got burned five times yeah the due diligence process improved i wasn't chasing stocks based on how much they moved you know the the idea was um you know look at the company and um, do some research on the company at that level in the industry so i know working with you uh, my research process has even improved more and i've started paying more attention to uh, you know, the bigger picture industry and then working my way down as opposed to researching the stock and working my way up to the industry. So awesome. And, you know, investing is a learned behavior. You know, you don't, you're not born as a great investor. It's something that you have to learn over time and expose yourself to different scenarios. So, you know, I think you probably must have made money at some point on one of these trades and thought it was a good idea. So you continued doing it, right? Absolutely. Yeah, that's exactly, you know, the first one's free. They say it in the casino, but also in the market, it just works out that way where, you know, you, you get lucky on one and you think it works. So mm -hmm. you're right about that. I definitely made that mistake before, uh, especially as a younger trader. But, you know, I would say the worst mistake I ever made, and this goes back to my hedge fund in the middle of the financial crisis. Uh, it was late 2008. And there were a lot of companies that were just looking for capital and trying to raise money and, you know, had been down significantly like 90% from their highs or whatever. And there's one company in particular that I remember, and this is Las Vegas Sands. They're a casino company. Uh, the narrative was that the, you know, company was building a huge casino in Macau and they also have a casino in Las Vegas. Basically the CEO, Sheldon Adelson was running out of money. The stock had been, I think over a hundred at one point and had dropped down to about $4 a share. Um, and then they did a secondary and the secondary came at $4 a share. And at my fund, I took down a pretty you know, nice sized chunk of it and it bounced for a couple of days and it looked good, but then it started to sell off and it went down to like 
three dollars and fifty cents one day, and then it was like at three dollars, and then it was like at a you know two dollars all of a sudden, and I was sitting you know down fifty percent in it, and so I just decided that I was going to add more because I saw that the financial crisis uh, was being dealt with. Uh, by government. Uh, I know I was sitting on a 50% loss. I decided to double down, which you know isn't always the greatest strategy. But in this case, uh, I saw that maybe there was uh, things are getting better. And, and then the stock started rallying and I was overjoyed. Finally, I had broken even. The stock was above four. And then it got to $6. And I said, you know what? I'm going to take you know this 75% profit on this. And I'm going to walk away. And that was a huge mistake. I mean, when can you ever say a 75% profit is a big mistake? The stock went to $100 over the next couple of years. And so the thing that I learned is that it's not the buying and the selling that is going to make you the big money. It's the patience. It's sitting on your hands. It's sitting through volatility. You know, And when you're in something at a good price, like a lot of you have been, in, especially if you bought stocks in the spring of 2020, there's going to be a lot of volatility. You know, the stocks are going to go up and they're going to come back. But in the longer run, if you are at a good price, there's just no reason to sell it. I mean, sell, obviously you need money, but um, not, not get out of the whole position all at once. Definitely try to keep a runner. So that was really the worst mistake I ever made because the position I had built, the pain that I took on it as it went down against me so much, and then just to have it let it go as, as soon as it went up was the worst mistake I ever made. And, uh, you know, I, I carry that one with me. Um, so yeah, I definitely I, learned from it though. I can relate to that one. I mean, it's like you just described the psychology of, of trading and, um, especially with adding more. I mean, the idea is if you're in a company and it falls and you're not willing to add more, you kind of have to question why do I own this company? Right. Do I understand this company? But in general, when you, you have that um, position, it's it it's a psychological problem with trading where you're very quick to take profits especially like you said if you've already had a little bit of pain in that trade but in reality you just didn't let your thesis play out all the way right um exactly. so yeah i mean at least you had a 75 percent gain right that was, i mean that was the, the worst 75 percent gain of my life <laughs> yeah. There you go. <laughs> Considering the stock went up like another 50 X from there and over the next few years. Um, but you know, you, you live and learn. And, and there are definitely other trades that I've made where I settled for a 30 or 40% gain and the stock goes up 10 or 20 X over the next couple of years. It, it really is about position sizing, you know, getting in a position you're comfortable with being able to sit through the volatility. And also, like you said, letting your thesis play out. So I think that's what I try to uh, bring to readers, and, and you also help me bring to readers. Is really about the narrative, the thesis, investing in huge trends, you know. And obviously, sometimes you're going to deal with volatility, but if you position size accordingly and and spread your your investments out across, you know, a, a diverse set of uh, sectors, uh, nothing is. It's not all going to go down at once. Um, so, so that is a little uh, piece of advice from me uh, to close this week's webinar out. I want to thank everyone for tuning in. Any comments, you know, please leave them. Let us know your worst trades. Uh, we can all go to group therapy together. For myself and my colleague, Steve, thanks again for tuning in and we will speak to you next week. Take care.